Good morning guys. Welcome back to Backyard Builds. Today I'm going to be working on Pat's Ute again. Just trying to get that tunnel area sorted out. So I'm not going to stick around and talk for too long. I'm just going to get the grinder out and start removal. Let's get into it. So as you can see, all that flat bar is off in a pile over there. What I wanted to tell you is, is I just cut beside the weld. If you're trying to cut through the weld, it doesn't always work because you end up might cutting through the floor or something else. And while I have cut through the floor in a couple of spots, it's no real drama. But while I, why I was cutting beside the weld is you could feel it sort of just drop through and you knew you were through the flat bar and you weren't cutting up into the floor too much. Now like I said, there is spots where I've cut through the floor, but that doesn't matter because it's all gonna get cleaned up in a second and then look at putting the new piece on. So I might end up cutting more of this out, making it all a bit neater. But for now, I'm just gonna get the grinder out again and just flap all those old welds off, clean it all up and then give it a quick vacuum, get all the dust out of here. There we go, mostly all cleaned up. You can see where the cuts through the floor went through a little bit, but don't worry, we're gonna weld them up. Ooh. And I'm gonna vacuum up all this dust and rubbish out of the cab now, just to give it a good clean up. So the next bit I need to remove is this uh, extra bit of pipe here that's been put in unnecessarily. But you can sort of see where they've hacked a hole in it. That was a pretty common thing back in the day if you put a floor speed, a uh, floor, a floor shifter on a four speed or a five speed. You'd obviously butcher a hole. You obviously always had to smack the brace out. But I'm gonna fix this, get it back to looking nice once I get that pile of junk out. And then we'll start tidying up this area and work out the patch on the top. Probably go ahead and knock this plaster of Paris, I don't know, turbo bog, something. Knock that out, knock that off off the underside and we'll give it a good weld, clean up, fill the holes and then get back to it. Let's do it. So I've got that cleaned up guys, you can see there's a white chalk mark there, i am just sort of roughly marked out what I want to cut off. I actually want to try and keep the brace on the inside because I'm going to reuse it in that car. So yes, you can see I've given myself sort of 10 mil almost or, and the rest all the way around. Time to cut. As you can see that I've marked it in white chalk again. The hole or the area that I've just marked is smaller than the piece. It's always a safer way to do it. So let's get the grinder out and cut that hole out nice and neat and then we can start test fitting the piece to go in. So 
So there it is guys, just got it cut and sitting in place, it's actually sitting um, really well because of all the contours in the floors, so it's actually sitting right where it needs to sit, there's a big gap here but that's not the end of the world, it's obviously a big gap here, you know, shit from the old cut, but I do want to cut this piece out anyway and replace it. But now that I've got it sitting sort of where it wants to sit, which is good, I might even get some Clicco's in it just to hold it. I'll mark it with chalk. I'll also get into the tunnel here and I can mark this a bit better. Now, I've got it sort of cut and fitting where I want, but I just want to cut and scribe up the tunnel as well. And then I'll show you how I make this nice piece look not like that. So yes, that's what's happening there. So let's get some Clicos and the chalk out and get it set and marked. So it's the next day. And this is where I got to yesterday. I actually got it trimmed and clamped into place. So it's actually nice and tight. I should just be able to go through and tack all this now and get it set. So then that piece is done. And then I'll move on to fixing the tunnel brace so it looks all original. So let's start with that. So there we go, tacked in. A little bit more of a gap than I would have liked over here, but that's all right, I can live with that. It's all fitting up pretty nicely. Now what I'm gonna do is replicate the detail that runs through there from the factory. Now I know it's a folded angle and this, this height stays the same all the way to about there. And this one feathers out into here. So it actually goes from there to nothing. So I'm going to fold up an angle this size and then I'm going to shrink and stretch it to get this nice because I'm going to take this original piece back off because it's all interconnected and it's a bit stuffed up. So I'm going to fold up an angle like this and then I'm going to shape it, get it nice in there, trim it down if anything and then I'll move on to the next piece. So there'll be a butt join on the corner. Not super ideal but I don't have the ability here at home to fold so tight to back on itself, but that's alright. We'll still make it happen. Let's do it. There you go guys, got that piece all tacked in nicely now. A little bit gappier than I would have liked to over here and obviously I've still got to make a panel to go in there. But that section's all right at the moment. What I want to work on next is fixing up this tunnel here. So you can see how there's a bit of a step in here. That step continues all the way around to there. At the same height it is about there. So what I'm going to do is fold up an angle and then shrink and stretch it to get it to curve round like I'd like. And then I'll fold up another piece here because there's a smaller fold here which sort of connects to there. And anyway, there'll be a corner joint which will weld and sand. We'll get the whole thing cleat coat in and get it started to fit and look more like a factory tunnel did. Thought I should give you guys a bit of a rundown on what I just did then. Um, just got some Inox or WD-40 or Lanox. Um, Lalon oil spray, whatever you want to use, it's alright. Sprayed the sheet in it. Got a small bit of Scotch Bright pad. And then just orbital sanded the whole thing. What that'll do is it'll take off a lot of that rust scale. It's been raining here. You know, you can see that all the spare sheets, just from touching them, 
get your fingerprint marks. So just giving that a quick clean on both sides. It's looking much better. I'm now going to mark my piece, chop it in the guillotine, fold it up in the pan break, and then I will dig out the shrinker and stretcher, and we'll give it a go. I'll show you how I'm going to form that angle. Those who don't know, you can see there's a set of jaws in there, and they pull in closer. They pull the metal in. You can see how I've got that shape now. So you take that up. Pretty good, pretty happy with that. Might need a little bit more just there. Just probably one little hit. I'm going to do that while I've got this. Handle. I know I want it right around there. I'll just give it a little like that. Back up. Pretty happy with that. That is totally workable. So now we'll make another angle. It's a little bit shallower, but what we'll probably do is make it similar size to this, but um, we'll measure the distance here. So it'll have a slightly longer flange on one side, and we'll make this one bigger anyway. So when we get it to sit in there nice how we want it, we can actually trim it back, because it needs to feather out to almost nothing over here. You can sort of... Sort of see what the original profile was like, and it's been bashed to hell there. That's alright. We know what we're doing. So let's do this next one up now and do another shrink. So this is what I have come up with so far. It does look funky, but that's actually how the factory tunnels were shaped. They had a weird relief here for the back of the gearbox to clear if you had a three-speed manual car. That's just how they were. So I've got that fitting quite nicely in there now. I actually did start trimming the original tunnel out. But it is late in the night and I need to go inside because I have work tomorrow. So that's where I've gotten to today, guys. Um, it's a bit of an odd one. It's only just me working on that shifter hole. But... I hope I gave you a few techniques on how to get something original or used, like a spare part, Monaro spare parts, because everyone just has Monaro's laying around to cut up. Um, but I hope that gives you a good idea of, you know, how you should go about fitting a new or used part. Um, this week's code word will be shifter, because that's where that goes. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you guys at Rod and Custom Show this weekend. Saturday, Sunday, we'll be there with shirts, jumpers, stickers. Make sure you come see us. Um, it's a first in best dress scenario. So don't forget, like, subscribe, comment, share, hit up your Instagram channel, all that, and we will see you next week on Backyard Builds. Thanks for watching.